Hi, I'm Betty Agent, Principal vi Violist with the Auburn Symphony. I'm here with you today to talk about Adolphus Hale Stork, a retired music professor and composer in residence at Old Dominion University in Virginia. He is of African American and European Jewish heritage, was born in 1941, and is still composing. The Auburn Symphony Orchestra will be performing his three spirituals for orchestra on April 30th at the Federal Way Performing Arts and Event Center. Mr. Hale Stork grew up in Albany, New York, where he studied violin, piano, and organ, and began composing at an early age. He also sang in the boys' choir at the Episcopalian Cathedral in Albany. The acoustics and style of English compositions of this choral experience contributed in later years to his compositions. But it wasn't until he was studying music at the historically black Howard University that he was first introduced to spirituals. In a recent interview, he said, I didn't grow up in the black church. I have an Anglo-Roman background as far as church is concerned. I was, however, exposed to spirituals at Howard University, and I love them. To me, they are the foundation of African American music. I wanted to help keep them alive, and they wound up in many of my orchestra pieces. They're great melodies. Spirituals are a class of Christian music associated with black Americans, combining African cultural heritage with the experience of being enslaved. The slaves were introduced to Christianity and accepted its promise of compensation in the next world. Yes, there was, there was sorrow in these songs with words of the hardships suffered by the slaves, but the spirituals also sang of the virtues of patience, forgiveness, love, faith, and hope. They were sing songs, work songs, and plantation songs that later influenced the blues and church gospel songs. The, sp the three spirituals found in the work that we will play in April are Every Time I Feel the Spirit, Kumbaya, and O oh Freedom. Two of these songs, Kumbaya and O oh Freedom, found popularity with the American folk music revival and became associated with the civil rights movement of the 1960s. Joan Baez sang O oh Freedom at the 1963 March on Washington, and there was a recording of Kumbaya being sung by marchers during the Selma to Montgomery March for voting rights in 1965. Another of his pieces that is inspired by spiritual is his fanfare on Amazing Grace, which was played at the inauguration of President Joe Biden. Here are the words to the spirituals that you will hear today and sing. The first one is every time I feel the spirit. Every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. On the mountain my Lord spoke, out of his mouth came fire and smoke. Every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. The next spiritual is Kumbaya, and Kumbaya translates to come by here, a plea to God to come help oppressed people, possibly in the language of the Gula people of African ancestry who lived on the islands off of South Carolina and Georgia. And here are those words, Kumbaya, my Lord, Kumbaya, O Lord, Kumbaya. O freedom, O freedom, O freedom, O freedom over me, 
and before I'll be a slave, I'd be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. Lastly, Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. And now I'll hand it over to Monica for the art portion. Thank you. Thank you, Betty, for telling us all about Adolphus Hailstork. Let's make an art project inspired by the art of Alma Thomas. The supplies you'll need are half sheet of paper, sticky labels in multiple colors, a pencil, and a pair of scissors. We'll also show options for making this project with paint, markers, crayons, or colored pencils. We begin with a half sheet of paper. First, use a pencil to trace a circle on your paper with something you have around the house. Our circle is going off the edge of the paper to create more interest. Choose a color of sticky labels. We're going to start with yellow. The first one is going to extend off the side of the page a little bit, and then we'll place the next stickers around the edge of the circle following the pencil line that we've made. We'll fast forward a little bit so you can see how that goes. The yellow stickers are going to go all the way around the circle, and then the last one is going to stick off the edge like the first one. Choose a second color and offset them, kind of like bricks in a wall, so that they don't line up exactly. That'll also create a little bit more interest. If you have a small space to fill, you can cut the stickers so that they fit better. Save your cut pieces, they'll come in handy later. Once you have the circle filled in, choose a new color for the outside of the circle and change the direction of the lines you're making. Cut the corner of the sticker so it fits up against the edge of the circle. These green ones are going to go straight along the edge of the paper rather than following the circle. Keep adding stickers until you have filled in the whole paper. When you're finished with your composition, you'll flip it over and cut off the pieces that extend over the side of the paper. And now you have a beautiful picture made of small marks of color. If you don't have stickers, you can use paint. Here's a quick demonstration using paint to make this project. You can use a paper plate for a palette and brushes in different sizes and shapes, or foam brushes are also available in a variety of sizes and shapes. We're going to use a round foam brush. This picture will be a landscape rather than a full abstract like the last one. First, we'll use a pencil to create the shape of a mountain in the distance, and then add some paint to our brush we're starting out with light blue, and we will use two more blues and a yellow. Stamp marks of paint with the brush following the edge of the line of the mountain. Of course, your marks may be a different shape, and that's just as good. This one needs a bit more paint, so we're going to refill the paint so we can get 
a better, more solid mark with the brush. As we stamp, we'll leave tiny spaces between the marks to keep them separate. And again, it's the same technique. Stamp marks along the edge of the line on your page. We'll do a second row with the same color and then change up the color. We're not using water to rinse our brushes because that would make the paper too wet. When you want to clean your brush, brush it off on a paper towel. We'll blend the first color with a second one. We're using light and dark blues. Continue on and make your marks darker as they get to the bottom of the page. If you don't have paint brushes or foam brushes, you can cut up a regular sponge to apply your paint. Now we're going to use a different shape of foam brush for variety and a different color of blue for the sky so it contrasts a little bit with the mountain. Make a row of marks along the top of the mountain. We're making one row of blue. Wipe off the excess paint on a paper towel and flip the brush over. It has less paint on the other side so you can change to a really different color. We're using yellow here. Make yellow marks all along the top of the mountain in rows until you have filled in the whole sky. And again, you can use whichever colors you like. And now you have a landscape. If you don't have paint or stickers, you can use crayons or pencils or markers. Really, whatever you have at hand. This is a really flexible project and you can create marks in lots of different shapes and sizes. This is where your creativity can come out and you can make this project your own. We hope you have fun making this. You can find more Art Inspires Art projects at auburnsymphony.org. Thanks for watching.